Hello and welcome to today's coffee lecture. I'm happy that today we have Dr. Sain Roadias as our guest. She's working for the research support service at the medical library. Welcome uh, everybody to this session. I'm part of the research support services at the medical library. We work with researchers to enhance uh, the work around evidence synthesis efforts. Therefore, today I'm going to talk about a specific part that is the assessment of, of bias in evidence synthesis. Within this lecture that is unveiling bias going beyond study types. To have a little of context, as I mentioned, uh, today we are addressing the risk of bias assessment within the context of evidence synthesis. Within the world of evidence synthesis, it is recognized that systematic reviews require a risk of bias assessment to be formally done and included in the project to facilitate the users of these systematic reviews the recognition of the trust that they can put on the results synthesized in these projects. So what is basically risk of bias assessment? Uh, this is a concept that has been evolving and nowadays can be differentiated from other type of assessments because when we are conducting risk of bias assessment, uh, we need to think about the implications of the methodological characteristics of the study in the results that are of our interest for the synthesis. Uh, with this lecture, I also take the opportunity to present you a recent uh, open website, Latitudes Network, where you will find uh, plenty of sources to conduct uh, risk of bias assessment. And um, specifically, you will find tools that the working group of this initiative has uh, classified as tools useful for, for specifically risk bias assessment. And, and you can see in the figure here in this slide that when we are talking about study quality, we can refer to many things, but today we are focusing on risk of bias assessment and you will see that the Latitudes Network will be also have a strong focus on the risk of bias assessment. Uh, the network, the working group of the Latitudes Network made an effort to classify the viable tools for quality assessment, uh, differentiating those tools that they consider that are key tools for risk of bias assessment from other options that uh, there are um, available. And they use these five criteria to select these tools. The first was that the tool needs to be focused specifically on risk of bias. The second is that the tool needs to offer a methodology to evaluate each domain of evaluation and the overall risk of bias of the study. The tool uh, should be used in at least a paper or work where um, the developers of the tool were not co-authors. And um, the tool, um, during the development of the tool, different disciplines like statisticians, epidemiologists, clinicians should be included. And the fifth one uh, is that the tool should avoid to, to use numerical quality scores to synthesize the overall results. Having these five criteria in mind, you, when you visit the Latitudes Network, you will find a set of key tools that the working group highlights as the um, risk of bias assessment tools that can be used for this process. But Latitudes is not used for uh, these key tools if you have a clear idea of what is the, the study design that you want to evaluate you will find also in within the platform other options that are available uh, nowadays. Now, try to, to have a little bit more of idea of what, is, what we can use 
when we have um, plenty of options to perform risk bias assessment. So let's try to focus just on the key tools highlighted by the Latitudes Network. By following this uh, flow um, diagram, we can identify key questions that can guide you to take the decision. So the first thing is uh, you need to ask you, is the study that I want to evaluate focused on humans? If the answer is yes, you have to ask you, the study is reporting quantitative data. If the answer is yes, you have to ask you, this is a primary study. If the answer is no, you will be uh, guided to use the Robis tool for risk of bias assessment. But if the answer to this question is yes, you will have to reflect on the specific details of the study that you want to evaluate. That is the case for randomized trials where uh, you will be guided to use the ROP2 tool. But in the case of not non-randomized studies, when but you are comparing uh, two or more groups, you will need to be aware if that study is actually also comparing an intervention. If that is the case, you will use Robin's eye. Or if that's not the case and is a um, uh, observational pure study, you will be guided to use Robin's E. Another important question or type of study is are the diagnostic test studies? And if that is the case, you will be guided to use Quadas 2. And the other uh, type of study could, could be the prediction model for diagnosis or prognosis. And in that case, you will be guided to PROAS. I'm going to show you quickly what is the meaning of these acronyms and what is the main focus of these tools regarding to risk of bias assessment. To start, as I mentioned, if um, you are working in a systematic review and you want to uh, evaluate the risk of bias of this systematic review uh, for a systematic review of intervention, diagnosis, prognosis, or etiology, you will be guided to Robis. And here I take this moment to also mention that each uh, of these tools have um, a specific methodology for implementation and many have different phases for the implementation. But for today, I will focus just on the phase where you have to concentrate in the characteristics of the study that you are evaluating. So Robis, uh, concentrate in four domains. Uh, the first one is study, sorry, study eligibility criteria. The second is identification and selection of studies. The third is data collection and study appraisal. And the fourth is synthesis and findings. There you will find the methodology for these tools is you will find a lot of signaling questions that will guide you to create a judgment about the degree of risk of uh, bias in the results presented in the study. Another very recognized tool is the ROP2, um, that is the risk of bias in randomized trial. And with this tool, uh, you will have to go uh, through five domains. Uh, with these five domains, again, you will have to answer signaling questions that will evaluate the randomization process, deviations from intended interventions, missing outcome data, measurement of the outcome, and selection of the reported results. And now we are moving to Robin's eye. Uh, you see that um, risk of bias in this tool is for the measurement of risk of bias in non-randomized studies of interventions, and you will have to go to seven domains. These are classified in three uh, specific categories, are domains concerning to the pre-intervention or design of the study, uh, the intervention and post-intervention. Uh, what is important in this tool that um, Robin's eye focus on evaluating information about the intervention that is under evaluation, 
but also um, makes a focus on confounding of, of the study and factors that could pose a problem from the confounding point of view. And when we think in the Robbins E, that you, you would see, well, what is the difference between risk of bias in non-randomized studies also of exposures? Well, basically that here we are not uh, focusing on the uh, intervention here, the evaluation is focused on the exposure and therefore uh, the evaluation is focused on how the exposure is measured. And again, of course, uh, because this will be also an observational study, a lot of reflection on how uh, researchers manage compound. Now we move to uh, Quadas 2. Uh, where we have uh, the risk of bias and applicability of primary diagnostics accuracy studies. And as the title indicates here, um, this tool will focus on studies that validate uh, technologies for diagnosis or tools for diagnosis. And um, we'll focus on four domains. The first one is patient selection, of course. The index test, that is the test under evaluation, the reference test or gold standard against the test uh, under evaluation will be evaluated, and uh, the flow and timing, uh, how these tests were uh, implemented in the study. Finally, we have here the uh, PROVAST, that is the prediction model risk of bias assessment tool. And this is as specific for those studies that are uh, focusing on the prediction of conditions through the construction of models. And here again, we will focus on four domains. Here, um, the first is the participants. The second one is what are the predictors included in that uh, model? Why and how many? What is the outcome that is under prediction with the model? And here, this tool um, gets uh, very specific uh, regarding to the type of statistical analysis choose to, to do this uh, type of stats. And with this, we have an overview of the main tools highlighted in, in a key tools in Latitude's network. But I want also to, to re present and other sources that I mentioned, they are out there and have been reported or used for quality assessment, but be aware that quality assessment is not exactly a risk of bias assessment because for risk of bias assessment, you need to use a tool or a system that helps you to reflect on the impact of the methodological characteristics in the results that you are synthesizing. However, as you can see here, uh, the Joanna Briggs Institute from Australia also presents a certain uh, tools to do more critical appraisal of different study designs. And within the Latitude Network, you will also find a long list of different tools that are available to perform assessment of the study. To conclude, um, it is really crucial for systematic reviews to select the appropriate tool to evaluate the risk of bias assessment. In case that you are not using a tool that has been developed and tested for this specific task, be aware of the possible limitations that you will have at uh, the moment of offering to your readers a clear idea of the bias of the topic that you are um, synthesizing. I suggest you to have Latitude's network in your pocket uh, in case that you need to get access to different tools, then you can easily get the official uh, websites to, to download the, the materials. And to summarize, uh, overall, the risk of bias assessment uh, will focus and guide you always through three main uh, topics that are selection bias, information bias, and confounding related to the study that you are evaluating. 
the tag of stack. Here, some of the references that I use to synthesize, and I invite you to follow the next uh, coffee lecture. And this is the time to have your questions. Thank you for your attention.